Hello Cabrini and welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Molly Fox. And I'm Sean Ostrowski. Here's your news now. Spring break is just around the corner, but why not start planning for when we return? On Tuesday, March 11th, get the chance to see the Philadelphia Flyers play the New Jersey Devils. Discounted Cabrini tickets are $15. Be sure to sign up and seal. Vams will be leaving at 5 p.m. Has anyone seen The Great Gatsby? If not, that's okay. Student government will show you what it's all about. Break out the glitz and glam, because that's this year's theme of semi-formal. The formal will be held on Friday, March 14th, in the mansion of Cabrini College from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Tickets are on sale now on SEAL. Students are $10 and guests are $15. And why not finish out the weekend by taking a trip to Baltimore Harbor on March 16th? Vans leave at 11 a.m., the harbor is $5, and the aquarium is $15. Be sure to sign up in SEAL. We sat down with interim president Deb Takis to talk about how her year as president has been and what it takes to be the president of Cabrini College. When students are on campus, I like to be on campus. So I, I just, I want to be here. You know, I want to be with all of you. It's, it's so much more fun when the students are here. When I first started in July, it was very quiet, very quiet. And then in August, when you all appeared, and there was so much hustle and bustle and clubs and events and it was just great. Uh, there's, a, there's an energy that you bring and you bring the campus alive and I really, I really enjoyed that. As the president, you are responsible. The buck stops here. You're responsible for the money, making sure our students get the education they're paying for, making sure our students are safe, making sure that we have new programs that students want, making sure we have a vehicle that students can get jobs after they graduate. So it's very, very student focused. And it starts with the enrollment piece. And I've been here since 2000, so I served for 13 years, the last two as chairman of the board. So I had a lot of knowledge and the board asked me to step in because I was retired, so I did not have a job. And I knew a lot about the school, and I knew a lot of the people already. And I think that kind of helps jumpstart your presidency if you know the people. I would tell you that you learn much more by not talking and listening than you do by making speeches and talking. So I tried to do that a lot. Interim President Deb Takis shared with location what she's been working on while holding the president position, as well as what is to come for the next president. One of the criteria that they are discussing, although nothing is finalized, I want to stress that, is that students who borrow money to go to school, will um, their starting salaries when they get a job, their monthly payments of their loans will not be able to exceed a certain percentage of their salaries. So you may think, well, big deals, okay. Well, it is a big deal. It's a big deal for a school like Cabrini because a lot of our graduates are teachers. And teachers do not go into the business world usually upon graduation and earn $100,000 a year. So that's gonna be a struggle and so we want to make sure, because we believe that one of our missions is to educate teachers and to send teachers out to change the world, allocating resources is a huge issue. Um, making sure that it's affordable for students, making sure that your students can manage the cost of education and figuring out ways to make it less expensive Figure out, figuring out ways so that students can cut a semester or two off and save money. We're working very hard, and I think all presidents are going to have to work with their cabinets to do that. I think um, we're also going to have to be much more engaged in fundraising. So I think that's an evolution. But probably the biggest thing that I think, and I am somewhat of an outsider to higher education, but I think higher education is going to have to think outside the box. I know that's a very trite expression today, think outside the box. But we really have to figure out 
how to make it affordable, how to make sure that the degrees we grant are valued and relevant. So what's Deb Tax's plans for next year? Next for me is um, going back to retirement, reading all the books that I have not had a chance to read the past year. Okay. I'll be finished June 30th, and I think I'm going to take a little trip, and I'm going to go to uh, England, Scotland, and Ireland, because I've only been to England once, and I've never been to Scotland or Ireland, so I think I'm going to do that. This has been one of the greatest years of my life. I so cherish the opportunity that I've had to, to do this and to be involved in, to really learn what a special place this is. I know that you know that already, um, but when you're here every single day and you meet the people and the students, the students who are passionate and have fresh eyes on issues and the the faculty who I just think are wonderful here and so devoted to all the students and the staff who care about each other and care about the students and care about something bigger than themselves. Everybody here is like that. And I think I've learned truly what a special place this is in such a deep and meaningful way. I'll never forget this experience. So Nick, what's new with sports? Lacrosse opened up their season. Basketball is in the CSAC playoffs, and I'll tell you a little bit about the Sixers. Men's lacrosse opened up their season this weekend with a dominating 17-4 win at Haverford College. Senior Corey Elmer led the Cavs with four goals and three assists. The Blue and White are currently ranked seventh in Division III lacrosse, but it's still early in the season. The Cavs will host number six, Dickinson College, later this week. Women's lacrosse dropped their home opener against Haverford College, 18-12. Sophomore Katie Lassiter led the Cavs with four goals. The Lady Cavs will look for their first win of the season as they host your Sinus College. After a week off because of their bye through the CSAC quarterfinals, the women's basketball team will take on Gwen and Mercy College in the CSAC semifinal game later this week. On the other hand, the men's basketball team won their semifinal game against Rosemont, 109-97. to The Camden connection of Vinnie Walls and Aaron Walton Moss led a second half charge. Walls had a career-high 39 points, and Walton Moss had his 13th double-double of the season with 28 points and 10 rebounds. The Cavaliers advanced to the CSAC final game, where they will take on Newman University. The two worst teams in the NBA squared off on Monday. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are 15 and 41, and the Milwaukee Bucks, who are 10 and 45. The 76ers lost by 20 points, 130 to 110. Are the Sixers too bad? The good part is, is that the Sixers are guaranteed a top five pick in the NBA draft, and they have made it their goal clear with their slogan, Together We Build. On a positive note, they're retiring Allen Iverson's jersey number Saturday, March 1st, during a halftime ceremony. This weekend starts the kickoff of 2014 spring break. Let's see how sports teams will be bonding and spending time together during the break. Starting our spring break this weekend, Saturday going down playing uh, Lynchburg at Georgetown University. So I think it'll be pretty cool to go down and play the Division One school, and also Lynchburg's top ten team. So it'll be a big game for us, and uh, spring break will be pretty fun after that. Uh, well, during spring break we usually just stay here and practice because we got to focus on our games, but we make the best of it. Go out to dinner, go putt putt, maybe bowling. See what else there is to do. Men's tennis, like we get to go home for spring break. Uh, we're supposed to practice like on our own when we can at home, and then come back ready and in shape to actually get the season in full gear. So this Saturday we're going to start our spring break off. We're going to Myrtle Beach. Uh, we'll be playing in a tournament, six games, practicing for two. Yeah, two. So just team bonding for the rest of the week. Yeah, we're gonna like probably go to the beach if it's warm enough. Yeah, it Hopefully it doesn't rain. Team from Japan, University of Japan is coming. We're gonna scrimmage them and then we're actually gonna share a meal with them and then they're gonna spend the night in the dorms with the Cabrini team. 
which is something we did uh, years ago. It's a great experience for not only the Karini Women's Lacrosse team, but uh, for the Japanese. So I think that's the great thing about um, hosting an international team is that you get that friendship through lacrosse that you normally wouldn't have. With us, they're going to be here for two nights. So tomorrow we're scrimmaging with them, um, and then we have a dinner with them. And then on Thursday, we're going to do some team bonding with them, and we're going to play bingo. And you know, just get to know them. It's a pretty cool uh, experience that we get to do. We get to play with people that come from Japan. Uh, and then on Saturday, we start our spring training by going to Florida, St. Petersburg. We have two a days every day um, in the warm weather, usually starting off in the morning, just lots of running and then end with scrimmaging. And then we have a day off to just team bond, lay on the beach, and hang out. Yeah, it's just a lot better than doing two days here in the cold. It's nice to go to Florida. <laughs> and uh, finally get some warm weather. So tomorrow night, uh, which is Wednesday the 26th, we play Gwyneth Mercy for, um, in the semifinals. And if we win, then we'll play Wednesday and we'll play the winner of Maculata and Newman. And then if we win that, then we'll play next weekend in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Um, so, you know, hopes are that we win Wednesday and then Saturday, but spring break, if that happens, it'll be pretty much low key, just hanging out, you know, little team bonding here and there, you know, trying to get that first NCAA win for program history. The um, four girls that are standing up behind me are swimming in Annapolis this weekend, Annapolis, Maryland. Um, they're going on to ECAC to swim the 200 um, free relay. The women's swim team just won our AMCC championships out in Grove City. It was the first time in history that any team has ever beat Penn State Barron, and it's the first time in our history that we've ever won a championship, which is a really big deal because last year we were runners up and this year we were able, able to actually take the title, which is really exciting for us. Hey, ho hopefully we're, we're, we're prepping a host here, uh, but no matter where we go, we'll be ready. So. Make sure y'all come back to the games, man. Spring break, but we're going to have fun around here, too. So come have fun with us. And that will do it for sports. Tune in next week for Philly Sports News. And as always, your Cabrini Sports. Now let's send it to Sean for your trip across the nation. Philadelphia Daily News reported earlier this week that elementary school parents in the Philadelphia School District are getting worried about the safety of their children after a five-year-old girl was kidnapped and raped last year in January. David Brass told the Philadelphia Daily News that he walked right into the elementary school his two sons go to and roamed around the halls without encountering any security. According to the Philadelphia school's chief inspector, each school has a security team that is supposed to meet monthly to review security procedures. Recently, these meetings have been happening less frequently. Northwestern University associate professor Diane Schausenbach told the Washington Post that being in small class won't harm a student's learning ability. Her research shows that increasing class sizes will only harm children's test scores, but also their creativity and social skills. Smaller classes benefit low-income and minority children. For students in smaller classes to get higher achievements, they should have a mixture of higher levels of student engagement and better teacher-to-student interactions in and out of class. In northern New Jersey, Pasig Valley Regional High School District was well prepared for the snowstorms that closed schools. Teachers made sure their students had received enough assignments to fill a snow day. School districts are cramming in more teaching time by eliminating some ho holiday breaks, adding minutes and days to, this, to the school clock, and even cutting recess. But a few schools are trying something different. Virtual school days, where students can continue learning while stuck at home. Students from Pasig Valley Regional High School were given assignments where they could log on to a school-provided laptop to do lessons while asking the teacher questions and interacting with classmates. This new way of learning on snow days teaches students how to better their time management skills. That was your trip across the nation. So Val, what's new in entertainment this week? Well, Drake had a concert this week, and I have surprising news for, about Robin Thicke and Kid Cudi, so let me tell you more about it. <laughs> Rihanna and Drake performed their song, Take Care, for the first time live at Drake's tour, Would You Like a Tour, in Paris Monday night. The rumor is that the two are romantically involved, but whatever they are, Rihanna and Drake's chemistry on stage was undeniable. Rihanna then went on to perform her hit single, Pour It Up, with Drake dancing right beside her. You'll never believe this, 
Robin Thicke and Paula Patton split after their marriage of nearly nine years. The high school sweethearts mutually agreed to separate according to a statement from their representatives. What do you think about the shocking split? Tweet us at Location News. Looks like Beyonce has set a new trend. Rapper Kid Cudi let out a new album without any notice. Talk about a surprise. You can now buy the 11 hit album Satellite Flight, The Journey to Mother Moon on iTunes for $9.99. Generos de Giacomo blessed those traveling, staying home, and even those just relaxing during spring break. Let's see what your fellow students are up to. Well, welcome to another episode of Bless Your Heart with Generos de Giacomo. I am Generos de Giacomo, and on today's special, I have a multitude of people talking about what they're going to be doing over spring break. Let's check it out, shall we? This spring break, I'll be going to New Orleans for Mardi Gras with my best friend, Lily, and we're going to have a really great time. I'm really excited. It's my first time on a plane, so it should be a lot of fun. Over spring break, I'll be spending most of my time on campus uh, practicing with the basketball team and getting ready for the national national tour. Um, over spring break, I'm going to Connecticut to see the national Broadway tour of once with my sisters. Right now, it looks like we'll be here the whole week just practicing and focusing, watching game film on other teams and getting ready for the tournament. And my younger sister has her high school play, Willy Wonka. So I'll be seeing that for opening weekend like four times. I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited. Uh, we're actually just out buying a bunch of clothes and stuff, trying to get like the purple and the greens and the yellows and put them all together. So. Over spring break, I'm going to be going to Haiti with my father um, to go meet my grandma. I'd rather go to Haiti to my family. Family comes first, in my opinion. This has been yet another episode of Bless Your Heart with Jenna Rosa Giacomo. I am Jenna Rosa Giacomo. I want to thank everybody today who talked about their spring break plans. Sounds like a lot of fun, if I might say so myself. I will be going to Costa Rica over spring break, so I'll be sure to let you know how that goes on the next episode. Happy spring break, Cabrini. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's check in with Molly for your news around the world. Is social media becoming a bad thing? For 21-year-old Alba Gonzalez Camacho, it's seen as jail time. The young woman from Spain posted alarming, alarming messages on Twitter calling for terrorist organizations to return and kill politicians, according to the New York Times. Gonzalez states she does not belong to any terrorist organization, but she has returned to a group known as the Grappo, which have killed numerous amounts of people back in the 1970s and 80s. Since Gonzalez's background is clear of any misdemeanors, she faces one year in prison. But for her, she won't have to face any jail time due to a plea bargain. The oldest known World War II Holocaust survivor died at age 110 this past week. Alice Hertz Sommer and her son were imprisoned at Theresienstadt concentration camp, according to the New York Times. Because of her love and talent for music, she would play music for the Nazis, and that's what kept her alive. A documentary film that was nominated for a 2014 Oscar was created about her exceptional life. Cabrini Rec offers free rock climbing at the Philly Rock Gym every Sunday. Let's see what students and other members had to say. The first time we had to sign a waiver just to make sure everything was okay and the employees went through the process of bouldering and going through the belay so that we would be able to rock climb without any supervision and would make it a lot more fun for us. Uh, rock climbing was good. It was the first time I did it last week. I thought it was going to be easy, but it was really hard. Rock climbing for about a year now, but uh, we've been coming pretty um, regularly for the past like three months. My husband and I actually do it together, and it's kind of how we spend time together now for fun, and I love that. And um, there's lots of families that come and rock climb together and push each other to do better, and so it's like a really good bonding thing to do as well and everybody's like super helpful uh, you know helping people progress and it's like it's like a, a team effort all the time uh favorite thing about rock climbing I mean like even though I mean this is indoors um, I mean just being a part of the outdoors is nice so I mean like when you actually get to climb outdoors which is a lot more difficult than this this is just prepping you for it 
it's um, I mean, it's a great time. It's just it's nice to actually be out and about and doing something healthy instead of just like wasting life away, sitting down, watching TV, eating potato chips. So it's nice to actually live a, a healthy lifestyle, and this is a really good way to do it. It's they change the roots of all the time, so uh, you're never done. It's always a new challenge, and I'm still kind of in some of the beginner area roots, and uh, I see all these other people that are doing these amazing things, so it's just the opportunity for progression and knowing that I can get there if I just keep working at it. Um, so it just kind of gives me a goal to work on all the time. I really enjoy it. It's a really good challenge with all the different colors and they have different levels of difficulty, so even if you've never rock climbed before, it's still a challenge and you can still complete a few patterns, which makes it really rewarding. I want to become better, way better at rock climbing than I am now because I'm not that good. So I'll continue farther than the school to get myself better at rock climbing. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's not only exercise for your overall body, it's exercise for the brain. I mean, a lot of people like overlook the fact that like all the different color tape, it's not like just random things you can grab on there. It's actually problems that need to be solved. And like, I mean, it requires, I mean, a lot of focus on just overall um, knowledge of how to actually position your weight, what strength to use, where to use, and how little strength to actually use to even accomplish it. So, but I mean, overall, it's a fantastic workout. Works your core, beats you up a little bit, but you feel great. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Molly Fox. And I'm Sean Ostrowski. Stay up to date by following us on our social media platforms. Simply search Location News. Have a great week, Cabrini.